Welcome back to Your Vote Counts. I think we're at almost two, over two weeks now without a speaker when there's a war in the Middle East. It's just, some people are calling it chaos, some people call it a clown show. I don't know what to call it, but we don't have that happening here. Your thoughts about what's happening up there, how it impacts us here. Yeah, it, it has a massive impact. And if you're a Republican like I am, it's even having an even broader impact. I'm proud of the Republican delegation. They have supported whoever the caucus, or in the federal case, the conference, uh, picked for speaker. I sat on this show. I would take Speaker Scalise. I would take Speaker Jordan. Here's what we can't have and continue to have. We have no rudder in the only branch uh, controlled by the Republican Party. I am pleading with Washington, D.C. Now, not with our delegation. They're doing a great job. Get your act together. We have to be able to govern. While, while our friends in the nation Israel in the middle of a war, the one branch of government controlled by Republicans can't figure it out. And as a Republican, it's unacceptable. We've got to have a speaker. We've got to be able to move forward. It's so uh, crazy up there that Hakeem Jeffries, the Democrat leader, is getting more votes than the Republican nominees for speaker. Your thoughts? Yeah, there's been like 17, 18 votes now for a Speaker of the House, and none of them have gotten uh, the number of votes that they need in order to have a Speaker, which is a huge issue that we don't have a Speaker of the House uh, in the United States right now. Uh, what needs to happen, in my opinion, and you all might disagree with me while you watch this on Sunday morning, I think that they need to put someone from a purple district, someone that has uh, an equal amount Republican-Democrat that vote for them, a member of Congress that actually has to listen to their constituents, all of their constituents, in order to continue to get reelected. I think they need to put someone like that forward for speaker so that both moderates from each party can vote forward as speaker and can unlock some of this gridlock. This partisan stuff of you have to be 100% loyal to us or you're out just doesn't work, and it's not working in D.C. Okay, so while this is going on, the entire nation media is focused on that. We've got something happening in Oklahoma in the very near future that may be even more impactful in Oklahomans and yet hardly hearing anything about it. Yeah, we have leadership races going on here in the state of Oklahoma. We haven't had a speaker's race in Oklahoma for eight years with Speaker Charles McCall having that position. We haven't had a pro tem race now, what will have been for six years uh, with pro tem Greg Treat. So there'll be a new pro tem uh, in 24-25. There'll be a new speaker in 24-25. You've got some um, incredible candidates that are um, running for those positions in the state of Oklahoma. And I would encourage both in, in the Republican delegation here um, in the House and the Senate, don't do what D.C. did. Get your ducks in a row. Pick your leader. Let's move forward with the progress that we have going in Oklahoma. Yeah, you can disagree, as we do each week, on policy, but the fact is the last few leaders have not been bomb throwers. They've been policy people first. And do you expect that to continue? I do. I got to start by saying Speaker Charles McCall, eight-year longest speaker in history, done a great job. My dear friend, pro tem Greg Treat, six-year pro tem, is doing a phenomenal job. But they're all terming out. I'm terming out with them. You know, in the House, uh, pro tem Kyle Hilbert appears to be the front runner by a mile. Uh, Kevin McDougal, Lonnie Sims are both in that race. Uh, the Senate's a little more interesting. Uh, you have Greg McCourtney, uh, Senator Bullard, uh, Senator Casey Murdoch, and you, you have Senator Chuck Hall who may emerge as the, as the a candidate if no one else can get there. But here's what's going to happen, though. We're going to have a great Senate leader, and we're going to have a great any of those gentlemen, whether it's the Senate or the House, I would be proud to be an Oklahoman with them as my legislative leader, and we will not be like Washington, D.C. These are good men, and they're going to find a way to do it, and, and we're going to govern. And I'll be gone, too, but I still live in this state, and I care. It's comforting that you said it won't be like D.C. <laughs> Thanks for watching Your Vote Counts. See this again at News9.com and your newson6.com slash counts. Follow me on social platforms at Mitchell Talks.